Hey there everyone. I wanted to talk to you about two different musical terms today, and those are consonants and dissonance. These are extremely important musical concepts in the world of musical composition because so much of music revolves around the relationship between these two terms. I'm going to give you some really quick, easy, simple definitions of them for us to work with for the purposes of this. Consonants we're going to say is when notes that are played together sound good together. For example, if I play a C and a G, there's like no clash between those two. They're harmonious. They work well together. Uh, they just sound good, right? So that's consonants. Dissonance is the opposite of that. It's when things kind of clash together. So for example, if I were to play a C and a C sharp, clashy, or a C and an F sharp even. Right, really clashy, gross, and a lot of people would think, okay, if we want music to sound good, then we just need to avoid all of the clashy notes, right? We don't want any of this, right? We just want to stick with these, or, and then music is going to sound good. But actually, music that is all consonant sounds pretty bland, right? Mary Had a Little Lamb or something like that. Most children's tunes are all consonants and no dissonance. And that's not bad, it still sounds pretty good, but it's honestly kind of boring a lot of times. We find a, a lot of times that in music, the consonants is given more gratification and more emotional satisfaction, more weight and meaning if we venture into the realms of dissonance and tension. I'll give you the probably the most common example. You hear it at the end of hymns a lot of times, or the doxology, right? The amen resolution. Sorry, let's play the right notes here. Right? We've got tension and release. Or sometimes it even does like a double. Right? So we've got this, the clash between those two notes, and then the resolution of that tension, right? So we go from dissonant to consonant. That's a pretty simple version, but it has actually really important connotations for our own spiritual life too. If our entire life was just consonants, then that consonants would have less meaning. But that's not how our life works, right? We're promised suffering in this life. Now, many of us experience it to many different degrees, but to an extent, all of us experience some kind of suffering, some kind of tension in our spiritual lives. And that tension, just like in music, gives more meaning to the consonants. Psalm 34, 18 says that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. If we weren't crushed in spirit in the first place, would we need him to save us from that? Not necessarily. I mean, he still would, and he's still with us. He still brings us satisfaction because of who he is and his innate goodness. But because we suffer, we can see to an even greater extent the goodness of God within that suffering. And we as Christians have the privilege of knowing the end of the story, right? We know that even though there's lots of tension in this life, that eventually it's all going to resolve at the end. There's a another musical term that I want to share with you that paints this picture even more. And excuse me for my nerdiness here, but I decided to share it with you because it fits so well. There's something called Sonata Allegro form. And um, it was a musical structure of songs in used primarily in the 1700s. So you can think like Mozart, Haydn, those. And uh, within this form, uh, the composer would gradually get further and further away from that original key that you started in. So if we started in C, they're eventually going to work themselves into the key of G. Right? And then for a while we're in the key of G and there's some minor uh, iterations of that and rather than just the major. And um, anyway, so we are in the middle of this piece, really far away from home. There's tension uh, as far as the structure goes, right? And uh, we eventually find ourselves back at home, back at where we started. And this could take like 20 minutes to get there, right? <laughs> so there's this big development and this creation of suspense. And a lot of music in that time was written in that form. And so you may think, oh, well, if people know where it's going, then um, how's that even exciting? But 
it's really cool because people could and take this form and find different ways to bring about tension and come back home. And the creativeness was in messing with that form. Anyway, that, I, like I said, I apologize for geeking out about it. All that to say, uh, we have a great parallel in our spiritual life. Like e even if we find ourselves for a long period of time away from home, away from that consonance, we know what the end result is going to be. And we find satisfaction in seeing how God is working behind the scenes to get us there. I hope you take hope in that today, and when you see dissonance in your life, know that it is bringing meaning to the consonants that God will inevitably bring. Be blessed.